Hello everyone, welcome to ACE Online and welcome to daily current affairs session. So, we will cover the current affairs of yesterday as well as today, right? Yesterday was a holiday on the occasion of Sri Rama Navami. So, we will cover the both the days current affairs. Today, we have a lot of articles from various uh, newspapers, Economic Times, Indian Express, Hindu, PIB. So, we have a lot of articles today. It may take a little bit longer session compared to the previous days, right? So, briefly, we will see what are all the articles that we are going to cover today. First one, the Naxal encounter that has happened in Chhattisgarh. We will see the details about it. Next one, permanent education number, also called as APAR. We have already discussed maybe one month before. Anyway, as it was there in news uh, in the Vijaywada edition, so we will take care of this particular article as well. Uh, new fishes in Lakadiv Sea, Lakshadweep Sea or Lakadiv uh, Sea, we can call it. So, two or three new uh, fish species has been discovered. Let us see what are all the features of it and the also names that need to be remembered. Then sovereign green bonds, not sovereign gold bonds, sovereign green bonds. So, we will see why it is there in use, who uh, were eligible now, what are actually green bonds are and how is regulated, everything we will see related to this. So, this comes under the uh, internal security, we can call internal security article. Then this comes under the policies of government or gov governance you can call, new features, this is a environment, then this is economics, economics, right. Next again, uh, next one more article from economics, imported inflation, same as that from economy, right. Next trees outside of forest India initiative, this is part of environment, environment. Next submersible platform for acoustic uh, characteristic and evolutions. The full form is uh, this one and the short form is space of DRDO, right. So, this is part of science and technology. Then Surya Tilak project on the occasion of uh, Ramanavami, uh, this is part of art and culture. Then colored coded weather warning system. So, this is forms part of disaster management disaster management, right. Next, soil acidification, again environment. Then, grey slender lorries, same environment, a species, very important. Then, meningitis, it is a science and technology as part of disease. Finally, factual pointers and practice questions. So, we have a very good number of articles. Uh, it is very interesting, there is a lot of uh, interesting articles as well as some factual pointers. So, please be attentive when you are understanding the things and if not, uh, you know, if you face any difficulty, you can always comment here, right. So, let us start. Very good evening, Malini Srinath and Santosh. So, let us start today's session with the first article. It may take a little bit lengthy time as I said earlier, right. So, the first article for today is Chhattisgarh Naxal Encounter. So, you might have seen in the social media or even in the newspapers or even news channels that there was an encounter in the Kankar region in the Chhattisgarh. 29 Maoist or Naxals has been killed by our border security forces, right. So, this is one of the biggest encounters that has been seen in the last 10 years that was reported by the news article. So, earlier few years before it has happened in Maharashtra, Gachiroli. Uh, region in Maharashtra, there were around 37 Naxals has been killed, but this is the second most one and this operation was jointly handed by Kankar District Reserve Guard. So, this is the local police of Chhattisgarh and then Border Security Force, BSF. Usually in the encounters uh, against this Naxals and all, it were conducted by CRPF, Central Reserve Police Force. But as most of the platoons of CRPF were, uh, CRPF were busy in the elections, so border security force has taken this uh, operation, right. So, this is the context that we need to understand. Now, what we need to understand from this article? So, what actually is Naxalism from where it has come and under which districts or which areas, which states at present are, uh, you know, affected by the Naxalism? So, all these things we will a discuss from very basic history of starting from 1967, right. So, let us go back to little bit back history. Before discussing this Naxal, uh, Naxal Bari district and how Naxalism has come, uh, let us go a little bit back 
towards the British rule in India. So during British rule in India, there was a lot of land reforms or you cannot say land reforms actually, you can take it as a land revenue systems which were very exploitative in nature. The landlords, right, you can take Jamindari system, Raitwari system, Mahalwari system. So these are the three major uh, land revenue systems during British. All the three systems were given in the hands of certain landlords or certain authorities and the people who are actually cultivating the land were not the owners of the land. So immediately after the independence, the government has tried to redistribute this land to the actual land tillers who were doing the agriculture. But that was not very successful, only 10-15% of areas throughout India were successful and most of the regions could not able to uh, do this because of various elements like caste, politics and all. Right? So, because of this failure of land reforms, one of the group or one of the regions that is Naxalbari in West Bengal, Naxalbari in West Bengal has, you know, uh, went for a rebellion against the local zamindars, whoever is holding the higher lands. So, this local people or local tribes uh, with the leadership under Kanu Sanyal and Jagan. Santal. So, this may be also asked in the exam. So, these two persons went against the local zamindars who were holding the lot of land as a rebellion, right? And it went with, uh, it was initiated in 1967, but immediately propelled into other regions because the same problem of failure of land reforms ha uh, holding the land by certain communities, caste of upper uh, level and then cornering all the benefits. So, all these things were uniform throughout India. The same struggle was seen across India. So, mainly underdeveloped areas, right? Because developed areas at least some employment will be there. So, the issue can be diverted. But in underdeveloped regions, so this rebellion has, uh, you know, encountered across the under, underdeveloped areas, right? And the ideology that they carried initially was of Mao, the first chancellor or the head president of China. Right? In 1948, there was a civil, uh, you know, civil war in China where there were two parties. Uh, one is Kuomintang. You don't need to worry. Just I'm making you understand uh, the ideology of Maoism. Right? So it was spread across the states in the uh, India, and this was taken ideology from the Mao. He is the president of China. There, in 1948, there was a civil war between two groups. Civil war means the fight within country, right? Unlike the country between the countries, civil war means within people of those within country, right? So there were two political groups. One is Kuomintang and the other one is Communist Party that is now even uh, ruling in China, right? So here in the civil war between the two clashes, the Mao Zedong led Communist Party has won this and they have occupied the China. So this communism ideology thinks that they need to capture the power of the government, there should not be any government, it should be the, all the power should be distributed among the people itself, there should not be any government. So that ideology was propelled into the Naxals those times and they have uh, rose the rebellion against even the state, that is state here means the government, elected government, they went against the government as well. Initially it was started against the landlords, but later it went against the government itself. So from there itself, it has perpetuated across the Indian regions and even today, we are seeing this. The regions affected by Naxalism is called as the Red Corridor. So that is also important to be remembered, right? So this ideology propelled with a much bigger one. At present, you can see here, this is very important, recent data given by the Ministry of Home Affairs itself. Almost all the South Indian states were affected, right? So, but the level is lesser. You can see the red color ones are the most affected region of the Naxalism. The Andhra Pradesh, the northern part of Andhra Pradesh and then some part of Telangana, Odisha, Chhattisgarh and some parts of Jharkhand, Bihar as well, the most affected uh, regions with regard to the Naxalism, right? And some other regions, the southern Andhra Pradesh and certain part of Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Maharashtra and even now northeast is also being under the Naxal affected regions. So these are the regions or the states recognized by Ministry of Home Affairs which is responsible for internal security, right? So they have identified uh, the districts which are affected by the Naxalism. Also, the Ministry of Home Affairs says 46 districts are affected by the Naxalism. This is also important fact. The 46 districts has been affected by the 
Naxalism and in 2010 it was 96 districts and now it has been reduced to 46 districts and it also noted that 76 percent of Naxal uh, Naxalism was down. The area has reduced by 76 percent when we compare to the 2010. So, this is about the Naxalism. Uh, we have seen the context. The context is not very important. But the details, the background about it, Naxalism, what is the issue, where it has emerged, why it is still being prevalent, what government measures are taking, right? So, all these things we need to know. Any doubts in this? Any doubts? See, I am not discussing a very detailed analysis. It will take one hour to discuss, no, more than one hour to discuss the Naxalism. What is the issues? What is the solutions? All these things I am not in taking care. I am exclusively taking the sessions to focus on the objective based examinations, right? So, that is why we are covering the articles which are relevant for our objective exams, fine. Next one, permanent education number. Why it is there in news? Uh, it was taken from Hindu Vijayawada edition that Andhra Pradesh government is going to implement permanent education number for all the students in the state starting from 2024-25 academic year. So, we are going to have a summer holidays till June and from June we will start the new academic year 2024-25, right. So, the it is going to be start across the schools that is what the AP government has said. Now, what is this pen or permanent education number? Let us understand the issue, then we will see the facts. As of now, if you are student, you, you can recall your school days, you might have educated in 3, 4 schools. You need to take TC, you need to take all the certificate, transfer from, transfer from one region to other region. So, you do not have any single you know, identity number which you can study anywhere in India. You can uh, study in Tamil Nadu, you can study in Jammu Kashmir or Ladakh. You will have a single number where all your certificates, where all your performance, all your challenges, all your good performance, everything will be noted in a sing single cloud or data. So, they can easily know how you have performed, what type of challenges you have faced, right. So, the new school will know automatically. You no need to carry all the certificates, take a t transfer certificate, nothing can be done. Uh, nothing, no need to be done. Just you can say your number, all the details will be transferred from one school to other schools related to your performance, related to education, right. So, that is the uh, pen that is permanent education number. It is also called as APAR, APAR, right. So, we will see in the next slide what is APAR and all. Now, this identification number is given by Ministry of Education the central ministry of education through the portal. There is already a portal maintained by the ministry of education where all the numbers will be mentioned there. So, it will be given through un uh, un sorry, unified district information system for education plus portal. So, the portal will have this details and accordingly you can see your all details whatever you are performing, right. And it covers more than 14.89 lakh schools and covers 26.5 crore students. The total almost all the students will be covered here, right. So, this was taunted or called as one nation, one student ID card, right. One nation, one student ID card. You no need to take many, uh, any more student ID cards once you registered until you complete your education, right, uh, in the schools. And this was mandated under national education policy. During COVID times, government has released new education policy. Right? Under this policy itself, it was clearly mentioned that we will bring one unique identification number for each of the student throughout their school. Right? So, from that only it was uh, you know uh, taken. And this is also called as APAR. This number is also a pen, permanent education number is also called as APAR, which serves as a single identity. And it will have 12 digits. 12 digits. Other card has 6 digits if you have observed. So, this number will be 12 digit number. This will be asked in the exam, right. So, it will be also a gateway for digi locker. What is digi locker? Now, usually when, when we were in the uh, childhood, we used to carry the certificates of ours, the physical certificates very carefully. There is a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, issues of losing the certificates, but now government has launched digi locker where you can scan your certificate and put into the cloud where government itself is providing to store which is called as a 
digi locker. So, you can just by typing your code, you can extract any of your certificates, right. So, this will be a connected to the digi locker. So, with your own identification number, you can link it to the digi locker, right. So, this is all about the APAR as well as permanent education number. So, they will ask you which ministry is handling, how many digits are there, when it was launched, under which policy it was launched, all these facts you need to remember, right. Any doubts in this? Uh, Sham Sundar, please give me some suggestions for SSE JE current affairs preparation. Fine, we will have a separate session on that because see SSE JE have a uh, certain factual based question. So, we will have, we are conducting already, yesterday we have released the answer writing strategy for group 1 aspirants. So, similarly we are coming up with such initiative to surely we will consider your suggestion and we will have a separate session, right? Yeah. So, next article, new fishes in Lakadiv Sea. So, Lakshadweep or Lakadiv Sea, let us observe uh, the, I mean let us know what is the context and then we will go to the Lakadiv Sea as well, right. Just but, um, most of the articles, most of the magazines that you read, they will directly cover the new, new fishes, but the question may come from Lakadiv Sea, where it is located, which is the boundaries of it. So, we need to know each and everything associated with the article mentioned in the news magazine, right or newspapers. So, the context is three new fishes, fish species were spotted in the Lakadiv Sea. So, you can see here this is a fish, this is a fish, this is a fish. So, a new fish species till now which was not known were discovered in the Lakadiv Sea. And what type of fishes, what they are doing, let us know uh, uh, in the later time. But before that, let us understand where the Lakadiv Sea is located. So, Lakshadweep or Lakadiv Sea, if you observe, from here this region, from here this all region is a Lakkadiv Sea, so which is part of Indian Ocean. So, this is the Lakkadiv Sea, you need to know it, right. So, here if you observe the uh, boundary, the Kerala state, the uh, Lakshadweep and then Maldives, Sri Lanka, Gulf of Mannar as well, here Gulf of Mannar is there, Park Strait is in that side, but here we have a Gulf of Mannar as well. Kanyakumari. So, all these are the boundaries of the Lakkadiv Sea or Lakshadweep Sea, right. So, the geography is very, very important. It is located in Indian Ocean, bordering with Sri Lanka, India, Maldives, right, and also Lakshadweep Islands as part of Indian Territory, right. So, this is the major observation. We have a big cities as well. The capital of Maldives, Malay is also located in the Lakkadiv Sea, and then Colombia, uh, sorry, Colombo we have, right. So, all these things are part of our uh, Lakkadiv Sea. Right. So, the geography is also very, very important. It is also bordering with the Arabian Sea. It is also boundary with the Arabian Sea, right. So, this is the Arabian Sea. All these geographical related things is very, very important for our exam. The same thing we have discussed in the points, you can go through it through the PDF, right. Now, what are the new fishes discovered? Here, one interesting thing, before knowing what type of fishes they are, let us know uh, something which is interesting not only the humans which can use the tools. Say for example, this pen is a tool, this remote is a tool, right. So, this cloth is a tool, uh, chapel is a tool, anything which we are using the objects are tools. And not only humans are using these tools, you can take example of chimpanzees which take the sticks, right, which they uh, take stick and then search for insect, insects. So, it is a type of tool. You can take example of crow or birds which carry the sticks and then make a nest. So, it is a type of tool. So, even not only humans, but animals, birds also use the tools in their day to day life using their intelligence, right. And the fishes that were discovered here for the first time were known to play certain tools or use certain tools. So, what I mean to tell or what the article want to tell is the fishes are capable of using certain tools. What type of tools? They are using the coral reefs. They are using the coral reefs or the uh, calcium material that were deposited in the oceans. We have discussed in one of the sessions uh, previously, right. So, they are using the coral reefs to break and nest there. So, they are using the coral reefs. So, th it is a type of tool. So, that activity is called as a tool using and that was discovered that these fishes were able to use the coral reefs as a tools in their day to day life, right. So, that is one important observation that need to be understood and from where do they have discovered that is also important from Lakkadiv Sea and what are the names? 
Jensen Vrasse and then checkerboard Vrasse and finally Thalassoma lunare. So these were the three fishes that were discussed. So they may ask you the names itself, the uh, which are, what are the names that were recently mentioned. So it is fishes, birds, something like that they may ask. Also what type of uh, unique activity that was discovered that is usage of tools by the fishes that is calcia, oh, sorry, uh, coral reefs. So these are all the facts that need to be remembered for our exam. Any doubts in this very direct article? I hope this is clear. Any doubts? Okay. Let us move to the next article that is sovereign green bonds. First, let me briefly describe how the bonds are performed. Most of you might be know, but certain students who are joining newly or they do not know about the general study, so we, you need to know about the activities of bonds. Say for example, this is a bank right? and this is a government take government or RBI you can take anything. Here government will not have sufficient funds, every time it is a deficit budget. So whatever government plans will not be sufficient for their own, whether for uh, distributing money, creation of infrastructure, whatever may be. So they planned for 100 crore, but the budget has crossed. So they want 10 crore more, right? So for this 10 crore, what government will do? They will make a bond paper and then they release into the markets that please buy the bonds now. After 5 years, now it is released for 10 crore because they want 10 crore, right? In the future after 5 years, we will pay you 10 percent interest. That means 1 crore extra after 5 years. Now banks are buying, banks are giving money to the government, 10 crore they are giving and they are taking the proof as the bond, that is called as the bond. Here they will hold this bond for 5 years and five, after 5 years they will demand the government. Okay, we have given money 5 years back, we have the bond, so please take this and give us with the 10 percent interest. So now the government will pay back 11 crore including the interest of 10 percent. So here bank was, was also benefited because they got 1 crore extra for 5 years and the government is also getting benefit because they do not have money and now they are also having the money. So they will create some assets and then they will also collect taxes and all and ultimately everyone will benefit, right? So this is the working mechanism of bonds. Now what are green bonds? Green bonds. Green bonds are the same type of bonds released by the government or whatever, any private entity, anyone can release the bonds, right? We have a different names for it. So green bonds are the bonds released by the government into the markets, whoever can want, they can buy. But the money that is collected from the banks after releasing the bonds will be exclusively invested in the green activities that is climate friendly activities like solar energy you can take or creation of forests. So all creation of national park, wildlife sanctuary, so all the money that has been collected from the bond will be invested in the green activities that is climate friendly activities. So those are called as green bonds, right? Now what is the context? The Reserve Bank of India has allowed the foreign institutional investors. Foreign institutional investors means a group of people who have pooled money from different activities like pension funds. So USA, in USA they have one company, they have pooled the pension funds from various public of USA and the money that has been pooled, now they are investing in India to buy bonds in the stock markets, right? So those are called as the foreign in institutional investors. Those were allowed by RBI, okay, you come and buy bonds in India, this, that was allowed by RBI, that is why we have taken this article, right? Now FI foreign institutional investors are allowed to buy these green bonds, right? Uh, Let us see what is actually a sovereign green bond. As I said, bonds can be released by anyone, uh, but for example, I, I can also release the bond, but will you take? No, you do not have trust. You will ask who are you to give me the bond, but you will not ask the government because government will stay forever. You will have a trust on it, right? So go, green bonds or bonds can be released by anyone. You can release, I can release, but who will take? That is the question. Here the bonds released by government, the sovereign entity. The sovereign means which is having their own territory. That is India is a sovereign country. So sovereign government bonds, green bonds means the green bonds released exclusively by the government. So government will release the bonds and anyone can buy it, right? 
So, those are called as the sovereign green bonds and approximately 16,000 crore uh, bonds were released by RBI uh, on behalf of the uh, government. So, sovereign green bonds were released approximately 16,000 and now it is allowing the FIAs and anyone can buy this. So, the government is getting money, right. The maturity period is see here, observe, we have discussed this. 2028 and 20, uh, 2033. So, there were two treasure of bonds released by the RBI on behalf of government, the green bonds and the maturity period. So, only after 5, 4, 5 years you can ask the money. Now, you cannot take, right. So, the bond is for 5 years or 8 years. So, that is how the money will be transferred to the government from various banks, various individuals who are willing to buy the green bonds and this money will be invested in the green climate friendly technologies. Right. Uh, so, the participants can be any financial institutions, banks uh, and all. And one important term that article has mentioned is the interest got by the banks. Now, as I have shown you one example, the 10 percent interest, but the interest will vary. It can be 20 percent, it can be 2 percent, it can be 3 percent. There are other bonds, government security bonds, GSACs we call them. So, these bonds are also released by the government but the money is invested for some schemes or creation of infrastructure uh, for budget, uh, you know, lack of budget. So, these are have a different role and the interest here one important term is the interest that we banks, whatever banks individuals are getting is much lower than government securities. For example, government securities if a bank, bank A has bought government securities, they are getting 10 percent interest. Now, if the same bank buys the green sovereign green bonds, same banks bought the sovereign green bonds, the interest rate is only 5 percent, only 5 percent, right. So, bank will banks uh, try to what you call prefer government securities or go, uh, green bonds? Tell me the answer. The interest that banks are getting is lesser in the green bonds when we compare to the government securities. So, which bonds the banks will prefer? Anuj Rajput, these videos are sufficient for even SSC, uh, CGL, whatever exams that you are preparing because you no need to go for more analysis. These sessions are conducted in a holistic manner. We are covering the facts, we are covering the analysis as well, but based on your exams, based on your previous questions, see the previous questions, based on that you can also know the content from this. You can, as for SSC, you can solely focus on the facts, but understand the issue. It will make you remember for longer period. So, these videos are sufficient. Try to read, daily we are covering 10 articles. So, per month we are covering approximately 300 articles. For 6 months if you are following, there is lot of current affairs. If not all the questions, at least some questions will come, right. Most of the questions will come, it is not some. Yeah, government securities they will prefer, they won't prefer the green bonds, right, because they are not getting the lot of interest. So, the interest lot lost by the banks, the interest lost by the banks in buying the green bonds is called as green EM. The interest that has been lost by banks, the 5 percent, 10 minus 5. So, 5 percent that they have banks have lost is called as green EM. So, because of this less interest, most of the people are not interested to buy them. That is why government is encouraging other countries investors, not only from India, but it is trying to diversify its customers. That is why RBI has allowed foreign institutional investors to buy their bonds, right. So, that is the issue of green bonds. Any doubts in this? Any doubts in this? Sir, if which government, uh, let me read this. Sir, if which government taking bonds, the government term will be completed, then which government will pay? See, you, I understood your doubt. So, for example, there is a government A. Let us take directly, it is not a political one, a BJP or Congress. Right? Now, say for example, BJP is in power and in 2028, there is a Congress in power. The whoever in the power, they will pay. See, here the government, we are not talking about the particular party, we are talking about the government. So, BJP may occupy the government, Congress may occupy the government or some other party may occupy. So, whoever forms the government will pay back, government will stay forever. These are parties which will change, government will never change. 
right? So some party will occupy the government, that's all. The government will stay forever. Only the parties keep changing the power, right? Any doubts? Fine. Now let's move to the next article that is imported inflation. Imported inflation. The context is Asian Development Bank has recently said that India could face an imported inflation, right? So it just said that we are going to face the imported inflation. Now the thing is we need to know what actually is imported inflation. Let us understand with an example. This is country A, say for example India, okay? This is India and this is USA or China, you can take any country, not an issue. And India does not have all the goods that is necessary for its production. For example, you take uh, lithium ion batteries, we do not have lead, we need to import from other country. So here China is giving us the lead, for example, we need to make the batteries, right? So if the cost of lead, lead is a uh, raw material to produce the batteries, if the cost of lead is increasing. So China earlier it was uh, you know selling 10 rupees per cage for example, imagine. If it is increasing 20 rupees per cage, right? We will import because we do not have resources, we do not have lead or lithium re uh, reserves, whatever may be. We do not have reserves. Even if it is increasing the cost, we have to import. Even for 20 rupees we have to import. Of course, we will reduce utility but yes, we will import. So here because of the increased cost by the country which is sending us, we are importing the goods and the cost of those goods which are being received from other country has increased. So those goods, the now the batteries will also increase. The producers in the country will increase the cost of lithium ion battery or lead ion batteries, right? So earlier they are sending on, they are selling at 100 rupees, but now as the China has increased the cost, this will also be increased, 150 rupees they will sell for each battery. So it means based on the imports, the cost of imports that we are taking, we are also sell it in the domestic market, right? So those rise in prices because of dependency on the foreign goods, the imported goods is called as imported inflation. So it is nothing but rise in prices of goods and services caused due to the import, uh, the increased price of the imported goods. So that is called as the imported inflation. Right? So this will be believed to rise input cost. Of course, it will increase the raw materials and then producers also will increase the price of the goods and services. Right? So that is how it works. And why it is cost? There is one main reason. Let us understand, there is an exchange rate in the, uh, as countries has, you know, collaborated each other, it is a free trade. You can take any goods from USA, uh, USA people also will take any goods from India and there is an exchange rate. For example, 1 dollar is equal to 80 rupees now in the market, right? Here depreciation means degrading of the value of rupee. So for 1 dollar, degrading means will it be 90 or will it be 70? Now tell me, depreciation means, depreciation means or should we give 90 rupees or 70 rupees? Now actual cost is 1 dollar 80 rupees, but because of depreciation has happened. Should we give 90 rupees or 70 rupees to the foreign people per each dollar? Yes, very good, very good, very good. So I thought only civil service aspirants will answer, but most of you have answered it as very good. Uh, keep it up. So 90 rupees we need to give. So here there is a USA and here we have a India, right? Now, this is the condition, the present date, for example, January 1, 2024. After 3 months, March 1, 2024, there is a depreciation, right? So the goods that we are taking from USA to India, the importers from India will pay 80 rupees per dollar. Now, on March 2024, as it has depreciation, depreciated, right? So we need to pay 90 rupees to the of uh, you know people who are giving goods to us, the imports. Will Indian buyers will uh, buy more or less because of the depreciation? Tell me. Will the Indian buyers willing to buy 
on March or January after depreciation. Yes, they will buy less because we need to pay more rupees, we will lose lot of rupees in our hands. So that is why the we they would not buy the uh, what you call uh, the dollars or goods from other countries, right. Or there is one more option, they will raise the cost of goods because we are importing lead. Now as the cost got increased, we need to pay more rupees, they will increase the cost of the lead uh, lithium ion battery or lead ion battery whatever they buy. So here the cost will increase. So the main cause that is resulting of the imported inflation is depreciation that I want to tell, I want to explain you this reason, that is what we have, that is why we have discussed these things. So main cause of the imported inflation is depreciation, that is very important point. Also beyond depreciation there are some more reasons, not just because of depreciation, there are some more reasons without even depreciation it can be resulted in the imported inflation. For example, take the same example we will take from the article which has given. There was a war in Iran and Israel recently and the oil reserves that we, we are getting from Iran, India is getting lot of oil reserves from Iran. Because of the war, they do not have proper workforce to extract and the oil has increased the cost. The, I mean the extraction of oil got decreased and the cost of oil has increased. So again there is a imported inflation because we need oil we need oil for transportation industries and all. So because even without the depreciation, because of the external crisis also there is a uh, what you call the imported inflation. So that is what we want to tell you here from this article, right. Any doubts in this? So what we have discussed from here, uh, we have seen that India is going to face the imported inflation because various condition, Russia, Ukraine war is happening, Iran, Israel war is also happening. Right? So because of this India is going to face the imported inflation that is what the Asian Development Bank has said. Now we have understood what actually is a imported inflation, how it works and what are the causes of imported inflation. So that is what about the imported inflation, any doubts in this? Dip difference between deflation and depreciation, uh, Sahana has asked one doubt, uh, depreciation and deflation, see deflation or yeah, deflection, sorry, deflection. Here depreciation means, depreciation means market oriented. So there is no involvement of the Indian government, okay. So there is no involvement of Indian government or RBI, you can say. So it is a market oriented based on the conditions, external market and all. So that is called as a depreciation, right. So deflection means forcefully done by the central bank. The same effect will be there, the effect of depreciation and deflection will be same, but the making authority is different. Here it is market based, there is no role of RBA, but in case of uh, deflection, right, uh, uh, RBA role, RBA role because of it, it is called as deflection, right. Deflation is different one, deflation means reduction in the cost. In, it is again as the inflation, inflation means increase in the cost, right. So this pen you, you are buying for 10 rupees, so it has went for 12 rupees, so it is called as inflation and deflation means reduction, so it is getting for 8 rupees, so that is deflation, right. So this is about the article, any doubts, is this clear? Both are different, you should not compare deflation with the depreciation. Depreciation is exchange rate, deflation is the reduction in prices of the goods, right? Yeah. Let us move to the next article, very factual one. Trees outside of Forest India Initiative. Trees outside of Forest India Initiative. And why we have taken this article? This was taken from Hindu itself. How can small scale farmers benefit from the trees on farms, right. So here now assume most of the farmers they grow, they grow the crops like rice, wheat or maize, cotton. So these are all the crops, right. So crops has very low and has agriculture is contributing lot of uh, to the climate change in terms of methane emissions, right. Rice cultivation is one of the biggest contrib contributors of methane emissions. So if we could encourage the farmers to grow the trees like mango trees, right, banana trees, whatever, the tree oriented crops, 
rather than we can call them as a crops, we call them as a trees like mango trees. They are also contributing for the farmers welfare, like they are also getting money from the trees also. But most of the Indians, Indian farmers are not able to grow the trees, they are focusing on crops. We will see why the reason, what is the reason and all, right. But this initiative is also we will see facts, but let us understand the issue then we will go back to the facts related to this particular initiative, right. So here the small scale farmers how can we benefit them to or how can we encourage them to uh, grow the trees, shift to the towards the trees, that is what the heading of the article that was taken from the Hindu. Now let us understand the background, Indian most of the farmers if not now but earlier were involved in the agroforestry. I am explaining you the background right then we will come to the issue. So we are practicing agroforestry in the earlier days which means we are cultivating the crops, trees and livestock together. So in the same form you can take one form there is a crop and then there is a big trees like coconut trees or mango trees right and then we are also doing the livestock like buffaloes, cows, all these things. So everything is happening in the same region or same given geographical area. So that is called as the agroforestry, agroforestry, right. We are, we were practicing that but now it got reduced, that is what the issue comes, we will discuss that. National agroforestry policy, the year is also important when it was launched something like that they may ask. So national agroforestry policy of government of India encourage the agroforestry among the farmers, right. But still even though our agroforestry encourages by the government, still the role or the activity of agroforestry is kept decreasing, it was remain restricted. That means what I want to tell, most of the farmers were involved in directly crops cultivation or maybe differently the cattle, whatever cattle rearing, right. But the even though policy is encouraging, but the actual practical application is very low, that is what the article says. Now why it was low? Because most of our land, in India we have a number of agriculture lands, right? And most of the agriculture lands are very small holding. So per farmer, it is just one hectare or one acre, approximately one acre, right? So per each individual farmer who is carrying, most of the farmer. 90% of farmers in India are holding very, very less land per just one acre and 10% of farmers are holding most of the lands, maybe because of the caste influence, higher caste was occupied because of historical reasons, right. So as the most of the farmers, 90% farmers are holding the very less amount of land, it is not encouraged for them to shift towards the agroforestry, where is it? Yes. So it is not encourageable because they need to put lot of input costs. If it is a, if we are having a bigger land, we can integrate all the things and cost economics of scale will be less. But because most of the farmers are small farmers who is having very less land, they cannot go into agroforestry, they need lot of money. So that is why the issue is the land, I mean the amount of land that farmers are holding is very less, that is why it is not encouraged them to go into the agroforestry, right. So that is why there is an initiative called trees outside of forest India. In forest it is always normal thing to have the trees, right. So it is not a new thing. In the forest we what we will see, we will see tree on, trees only. But this is an initiative, trees outside of forest India, forest India, right. So this initiative was launched by India and USA. So under USA, US Agency of International Development which was established separately by the US government and the Ministry of Environment. So these two organizations has come together agreed to launch the trees outside the forest initiative, right. Uh, approximately 2 million, 2.5 million dollars were released by the US government for India to encourage the tree cultivation outside of the forest under this initiative, right. So it aims to seek the increase in tree covers beyond the forest reaches beyond the forest areas, it want to encourage the tree cultivation. And this is not deployed in all the states, only 7 states, for only 7 states this initiative has been launched, Andhra Pradesh, Assam, Haryana, Odisha, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu and Uttar Pradesh, only 7 states were launched with this initiative, right. And as I said, it aims to encourage the tree cover in the beyond forest regions and it is implemented by 
सेंटर फॉर इंटरनेशनल फॉरेस्ट रिसर्च एंड वर्ल्ड आग्रो फॉरेस्ट्री सेंटर सो दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दे विल आस्क यू हू हैज लॉन्च दिस और इफ इट इज स्टेटमेंट बेस्ड दे विल चेंज सम अदर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लाइक वर्ल्ड बैंक और यूनाइटेड नेशन एनवायरमेंटल प्रोग्राम समथिंग लाइक दैट दे मे आस्क सो दिस आर द इंप्लीमेंटिंग एजेंसीज ऑफ दिस इनिशिएटिव राइट एनी डाउट्स इन दिस सो वी हैव सीन द कॉन्टेक्स्ट व्हाई वी हैव टेकन दिस एंड वी हैव सीन द इशू व्हाई वी आर नॉट एबल टू गो इनटू द एग्रो फॉरेस्ट इवन दो देयर इज अ पॉलिसी सो टू सॉल्व दैट इशू द इनिशिएटिव वाज लॉन्च्ड बाय इंडिया एंड यूएसए एनी डाउट्स इन दिस please do respond if possible so that i'll come to know whether you understood so we'll move to the next article right okay uh, so the next article is submersible platform for acoustic characteristics characterization and evaluation space they will ask you the full form also so I, like for example some students were asking about ssc cgl right so they will ask you directly the full forms itself which ministry has launched they it is like very factual questions they will ask if you are writing civil services or even in engineering service examination there is a 15 current affairs question there the standard is higher and based on your state psc how they are giving you have to see the past trends and accordingly you can you have to tune your preparation right so this is a full form submersible platform for acoustic characterization and evaluation acoustics means sound right so why we have taken this article this is a technology the whole space that i am talking about submersible platform for acoustic characterization and evaluation it is a technology this was demonstrated in the sonar systems of uh, set up by drdo so it is a premier testing evaluation technology hub in the uh, related to the sonar system we will see what actually our sonar system and this is inaugurated in the kerala right so this is a technology center where we can test the acoustics will you will understand in the next slides so this is a new technology that has been uh, launched by drdo in the kerala state right let's understand from very basic level you will understand the context what are sonar systems what are sonar systems sonar systems means a type of technology where sound can travel through water if you were aware about it sound can travel through water also so if some sound is released from the ship whatever the te uh, the te uh, technology we have it can go and reflect back right based on the different type of instruments if it is fish if it is some metallurgy so different different materials have different different types of characteristics so sonar systems means the technology which is used by the sound waves to study the underwater under ocean as well as above ocean also we can uh, do it right so sonar system is a full form is sound navigation and ranging based on the sound waves reflection once we send from our the source based on that we can also study which type of uh, activities are happening around the ocean even fishes can reflect the sound waves right so this is the technology so it helps in the determination of underwater land forms what type of topography is there under water we can know and which type of objects they are roaming is this a big fishes or small fishes everything can be known from the sound waves you no need to worry about knowing how it is noted and all it is very technical things right so it is also used for underwater communication if there are missions like in submarines right so even submarines travels under the ocean and uh, fight in the water as well so even underwater communication can be done using the sound so the all this technology that we use to study the mechanism underwater using sound waves is called as sonar systems right now coming to the space that is submersible platform for acoustic characterization and evaluation of space so it is a testing usually where these are performed it is under under ocean we need to practically go near oceans and then we need to do so rather than going directly to the ocean a technology center was launched in kerala the same how oceans the activity is steady uh, done so the same pro, uh, like you know to test the technologies it was launched in the kerala state by drdo to study the sonar acoustics it was set up by naval physical and oceanography laboratory of drdo this is fact is important so this technology was set up for various ships so even helicopters you can see here even helicopters 
Okay, yeah. So even helicopters can send the sound and they can record what is happening. So this technology if succeeded can be deployed for our Indian ships, submarines, helicopters to study what is happening under the ocean and also for communication technologies, right. And it will consi consist of two distinct assemblages. The technology demonstration hub that was launched in Kerala has two things. One is floating on the water, right. One is float the platform which is floating on the water. This is a water level. So it can float here and can steady the underwater by sending the sound waves. And other one is submersible platform. And one more platform is underwater. And then they can study underwater itself for how the sound waves are uh, being reflected based on the different activities, right. So the all the data can be used for communication, modern scientific exploration, even minerals, they also reflect sound waves, right. So that is the mechanism. You understand the mechanism, know the full form and the facts, who launched it, right. So when they have launched, where the technology demonstration center was created, that is Kerala, all these things are facts to be known. Okay, so that is of uh, the previous article. Now let us move to the next article that is Surya Tilak project. From now onwards, we will have short articles, we will complete in the 15 20 minutes, right. So, Surya Tilak project on Sri Ram Naomi yesterday uh, at Ram Lalla that is in Ayodhya, how the sun rays went directly to the God's face that is Tilak, right. So, this has happened yesterday. Let us know who have done this and what is the significance. Indian Institute of Astrophysics, this was article taken from PIB, no newspaper has covered this, right. So you need to know from the articles covered by PIB, Press Information Bureau. So Indian Institute of Astrophysics, an autonomous body under Department of Science and Technology has handled this project, has handled the Suritilak project of Ayodhya, right. That is why we have taken this article. Now, what is this Surya Tilak project? They may be directly asked. So that also you need to know. It was to make sunlight, uh, sun rays go directly into the Ramralla face as a Tilak, right. So that is the aim of the project and it was done at 12 noon, afternoon, right. So 12 noon and it was carried out with a different calculation positions. We, it is very difficult to uh, exactly design any of the instruments, any of the particles to directly receive the sunlight. Earlier if you go to the ancient India, we have a number, number of temples where the design has happened that sun rays directly keeps on the uh, gods, uh, you know, face or maybe on the body or even on the legs, right. We have a number of such things and this is one such activity, right. And one important thing, the difficulty is that Sri Ramanomi does not have a single date because we are following lunar calendar. The festival is based on Chaitra month of lunar calendar, but actual sun rays, these are all calculated based on the Gregorian calendar, the yearly calendar that we follow, right. So this is a local Hindu calendar which follows lunar. So it is very difficult. We cannot plan single rays. The, the
yeah so is this clear now so there was a some issue i hope this is clear so is this uh, has have you listened the surya telak project or can anyone respond have we completed surya uh, surya telak project okay fine i'll uh, briefly explain again anyway it is factual so as i said the moon calendar is the lunar calendar that we follow for hindu festival is different and the gregorian calendar the daily calendar based on the date it is different so it is sri ram navmi keeps changing the date it is not a fixed one like you can take uh, may 1 or uh, the labor day it is always fixed but this festival is not fixed and it changes based on the hindu calendar so it is very difficult to predict the sunrise because based on the climate sunrise keeps changing so to uh, you know to tackle that the indian astro indian institute of astrophysics has designed in such a way that even if it is changing the dates that uh, uh, surya rays the uh, sun's rays will directly fall on the uh, you know god's face as a tilak right so this is a very simple who has developed and uh, uh, what is actually surya tilak project so that will be sufficient for our exam right great okay so i have explained let's move to the next article the color coded weather warning system color coded weather warning system so again uh, uh, you know a very simple article very briefly we can complete indian meteorological department imd has issued orange alert for heat waves in the states certain states like telangana andhra pradesh maharashtra they have issued the orange alert we will see you will understand what actually is orange alert yellow alert and all right so this is the context why we have taken this article now these colors are issued for various weather events this alerts are not exclusively to heat waves it can be for any climate weather events it can be for heavy rainfall it can be thunderstorms it can be for heat waves it can be for cold waves cyclone and any type of climate weather events these alerts are issued by imd so it is not a different for different events but it's a single categorization for different events right we will come back to the context again let's understand different color categorization of imd right so this color categorization are issued for the awareness among the public as well as an alert for the government agencies right so let's take there are four type of four types of color categorization green yellow orange and red if it is green alert no severe weather is expected in the coming future in the near future there won't be any such type of weather disruption keep up the date with the latest forecast that's it there is no warning sign but if green alert is issued that means in the next coming few days farmers can do whatever activity they want so there won't be any weather event so this is that's why it is issued so you may ask sir why should be alert if there is no activity because it is also positive alert for the people who depends on the climate next is yellow alert yellow alert means beware so there is a possibility be aware that there may be some climate issue in the coming days so it is an basic alert that to be ready and all orange alert means be prepared not even just aware but also be prepared that it is going to come some some other thing it is going to be come in a weather events right so remain vigilant keep up the date with the latest forecast and possible precautions please do uh, take care right and the final one is red alert take action so already the weather event has caused uh, or it is going to occur in the next few minutes or few hours so take action not just being prepared you have to take action already disaster may happen so you have to take action so all these four categorization it was asked in upsc 2023 or 22 mains also mains examination they have asked as a question right what type of alert so these are the four alerts they may ask you in the objective questions as well so orange alert of heat waves means be prepared there is going to be a big event of heat wave in the coming days so this is what the imd has issued any doubts in this okay now let's move to the next article that is solid uh, soil acidification soil acidification so there was an article on economics times right uh, even in down to earth there were few articles 
uh, yesterday about soil acidification and the context is over 30 percent of our cultivable land that means agriculture if you are a, from a farmer family you you might be aware the soil fertility will decrease with the soil acidity right so 30 percent of our cultivated land in india has going already carried a or acidic soil so the soils out of 100 percent soils that we are having 30 percent are already acidic which means their fertility has reduced right so that is the context why we have taken this article now what actually is a soil acidification you all might be aware about ph scale right starting from 0 to 14 right so anything related less than 7 is called as acidic and greater than 7 is considered as a uh, what you call alkaline right so here if the soil ph is less than 5.5 not 7 okay very very important ph is if less than 5.5 those soils are called as acidic soils and what will happen to those acidic you know less than uh, soils with uh, less pH value observe here there are many minerals magnesium, nitrogen, uh, calcium whenever there is a decrease in pH value less than 5.5 this green color which are very important for plants will get removed because of various activities you no need to worry like reactions and various other things when the pH value gets lesser all these green which are very useful for plants will be removed will be removed and the red color ones which are not very which, which gives lot of fertility are removed and these are all not very important for plants the main things will be removed so that phenomena when the pH value gets less than 5.5 is called as soil acidification so it will lead to formation of soil inorganic carbon removal so we have seen the green things here so those are all called as a which can give the carbon content to the plant inorganic carbon so that carbon is very very important for plants and because of soil acidification that is removed so that is called as a soil acidification and then this can be caused because of release of co2 carbon dioxide excess utility of soils or fertilizers that we are using the, the inorganic fertilizers nitrogen phosphate urea all these fertilizers excess if we use the reactions will happen and pH will uh, fall below the 5.5 so it will lead to soil acidification right so factors as I said leaching of nitrogen from fertilizers leaching means coming out of the soil right so leaching of nitrogen organic residue decomposition so some decomposition by the microorganisms that will also uh, leads to less than pH value of 5.5 uh, and release of CO2 by the soil itself because of excess heat and all so this may result in the soil acidification so in such cases soil will not perform well the fertility will reduce the productivity of agriculture will reduce and ultimately droughts will also occur right so that is about the soil soil acidification right uh, next one gray slender loris so this is part of environment very factual in nature gray slender loris okay so here this is a animal so i should have been added an image you can just check in google because see always whenever you are referring to species plants and all try to go to google and see them so your brain will capture uh, when you see the uh, name in the exam right so gray slender loris is a animal and this was rescued from north goa recently north goa recently right so two days back itself it was rescued that's why we have taken this article now let's know about the gray slender loris whenever there is a species based uh, thing uh, related to animal you need to know where it is located in india where this is being spread and second thing what is the status of iucn international union for conservation of nature i have explained you many times the list starting from data insufficient to least concerned near threatened endangered critically uh, vulnerable endangered critically endangered extinct in wild extinct so there is a status you need to know the status of that animal where is the distribution and the status and there are some special features of the animals like uh, incubation period there are specific features for, for different animals so that also you need to know so this slender lore is where it is uh, situated they are located mostly in the tropical rainforest semi evergreen forest and swamps the coastal regions right so these are the regions where it is located 
and mainly it is found in the eastern ghats of india so you can observe this is directly taken from wikipedia itself so this is the region where slender loris is located no other regions it is located right so mostly in the eastern ghats and some western some southern western ghats so this is the area where it is spread and the status of conservation is near threatened near threatened so the it is just above the least concern so this is the status and they are slow movers like other cheetah or leopard they, they can't run they are very slow movers and foragers means search for food they always try to search for food in terms of small insects and all right and they form colonies near to the prey wherever their food is located so in the same region they forms the their own homes that is colonies right and one important feature is they are viviparous that means they don't lay eggs whatever the animals that lay eggs are called as oviparous oviparous and viviparous means directly gives birth without any eggs so these are viviparous animals right so those are the facts next and the last article for today meningitis so it is a disease why we have taken this article because nigeria became the first country in the world remember the country also many times has been asked in the exam nigeria has become the first country in the world which introduced the vaccine for meningitis right so the name is men 5 cv here it is here men means meningitis right so this is the vaccine name they will directly ask you what is this vaccine also right so it offers protection against five strains of bacteria in a single shot so this vaccine can protect against this bacteria right so this is a vaccine and let's know about the meningitis disease this is a inflammation inflammation means swelling or becoming red swelling excess swelling so inflammation of surrounding tissues tissues within our human body especially in the brain and spinal cord not especially it is exclusively so you can see here inflammation is this is the normal brain and this is the viral infection viral or bacteria meningitis is caused by not just about the bacteria it can be caused by bacteria virus fungi parasites so it can cause by any of the sources right and it is a person to person transfer so the this affects the part of brain this will also be asked in the exam meningitis disease affect which part of uh, human body so it is brain inflammation of human brain right so mostly young children are affected it can transfer from person to person through breath the air that you discharge so this is also important fact any doubts in this any doubts if not then we'll move to the factual pointers right so we have number of facts today around 8 to 9 facts are there any doubts before that i want to clarify from you great so let's move to the factual pointers there are 8 to 9 facts that you need to know first one central government is planning to launch the testing labs for high grade kasturi cotton in the six states so here the kasturi name is important kasturi is a na name given to the cotton variety and it is a very superior quality of cotton with fine texture and high quality mainly found in tamil nadu and andhra pradesh so the facts that you need to remember the name of cotton variety right and then e context the government is going to launch six labs and then the quality that is fine texture and high quality and which regions andhra and tamil nadu right so this is a facts to be remembered next uh, hubble tension see the universe before going into knowing this facts let's understand the prediction of universe formation now we have earth and we have a solar system we have a milky way galaxy right uh, we have a whole universe earlier it is just a part of just single point from the single point it kept expanding and it is still expanding into a larger bigger one right so hubble has predicted using his hubble constant called as h not or h0 so he has predicted that universe was point and then it expanded so there was a theory given by him using uh, hubble constant but using this hubble constant the scientist has trying to predict the expansion of universe and it is giving different results every time 
how it is calculated and not that is not needed for our exam it is a mathematical one right so they are using the scientists are using the h not the hubble uh, constant but the results are being different results are coming for different uh, changes so that's why the hubble tension is a phenomena where we are getting different results when we are using the different conditions by using the h not so the inconsistency results that we are getting is called as hubble tension so the scientists from germany and uk have proposed radical explanation for the discrepancy in the measurement that's why we have taken this article right so very factual in nature next one astronomers have found the massive black hole in our milky way galaxy right in our milky way galaxy what is black hole so this may be also asked in the exam black hole is a region in the universe where anything that passes through it will be attracted so if you pass through it it will capture anything can be captured completely or attracted into it no other bodies even light cannot escape from it if you pass through light even light will be completely absorbed so no light can come out of it so black hole is a region in the space where nothing can be escaped from that region right still studies are going on so such type of new black hole the name gaia bh3 gaia bh3 was discovered by the scientists they will directly ask you the name and this is the second one to be discovered from the uh, milky way galaxy earlier one was named as gaia bh1 now this is bh2 it is approximately 2000 light years from the earth so this is a fact next one this is also very very important to be remember the total installed capacity of our country is 428 gigawatts the total power that we are installed in india is 428 gigawatts out of that 41% 41.4% is the renewable energy source renewable energy means which can be generated from our natural resources which are replenishable in nature right so 41 per 41.4% is the renewable energy out of it dominated by solar power with 75.57 gigawatts followed by uh, yes large hydro project and then wind power so this is one this is two dom second dominated third is wind power right so together out of 428 41% approximately 180 something 180 or 190 is from renewable energy rest is from coal and other things next one united nations conference on trade and development united has released a report titled trade and development report they have been directly asked in the many times in the exam so you have to remember trade and development report is given by united next water level have dropped 13% of capacity in the lake kariba in africa right recently el nino is going on across the uh, you know world or globe so because of that 13% of its capacity got reduced because of el nino right and this lake is located between zambia and zimbabwe this is important so this is the lake zambia and zimbabwe so this is between these two countries you have to remember next world chagas disease day was observed on april 14th chagas is a disease caused by the parasite named trypanosoma cruzi it is mainly found in the latin america so it is an eye disease you can see here it is an eye disease caused by a protozoa this is important and it is a vector borne disease vector means which can carry by the insects right so this is the facts related to it the last or last before one new zealand and cook islands new zealand as a country and cook islands has given legal person status to whales the whales fishes has got the legal persons how the person or individual human is treated the same way whales are going to be treated now in the new zealand and cook islands right so this is earlier wangnui river in the new zealand was also declared as a legal entity like how person is treated in the law the same way it is treated right in the last again okay we we have two more sorry so researchers have discovered a type of organelle organelle means a cells like how human body has called nitroplast a marine algae it is an algae it is not virus bacteria or something it is a algae nitroplast right that can fix nitrogen 
so nitrogen usually plants will fix the nitrogen like pulses and all which will take nitrates and then convert into nitrogen so we have discovered the name broadfera bigloi so that was the name they will ask especially in the higher level of exam so it is a type of nitroplast which which has a capacity to nitrogen fixation yes now the last one archaeological excavations recently has revealed 5200 year to uh, 5200 year old harappan site called as pedta bet in kutch pedta bet is a located in kutch region they have excavated and found certain excavation so the name of site is important where it is located is important right so we have a lot of facts uh, today uh, which is actually a benefit if you are covering lot of facts means you are not missing anything right yes more gravitational force exactly uh, santosh you are correct so let's solve the practice questions for today from the articles that we have discussed right yeah first one which are not located in the lakadiv sea which of the following is are not located in the lakadiv sea colombo city gulf of mannar chennai city male city so what is the answer for this gulf of mannar yes we have seen right it is part northern part colombo city it was there eastern side so this is also remote male city was located in the west this also we have seen so chennai city is not located in uh lakadi city is much northern side in the bay of bengal yes four students have answered santosh srinad sahana and swarupa have answered it as correct very good yes malini uh, answer is c next one which of the following best defines the term imported inflation imported inflation second question right rise in the prices of domestic products due to shortage of imports of similar goods so that is the first general price level rise in a country because of the rise in prices of imported commodities that is the second statement increase in the prices of commodities of a country due to dependency on raw material from external markets a spurt in production prices of certain commodities so what is the answer rise in let's see one by one a spurt in production prices of certain commodities no it is not related to the local production it should be from other away right external markets now let's see the second one increase in prices of commodities of a country due to dependency on raw material they are telling about the dependency right so not dependency actually it is not always dependency even beyond dependency they can increase the prices it is not dependency right so yes it seems to be correct but it is not always correct you have to choose the best possible option then rise in prices of domestic products due to the shortage of imports of similar goods there is no shortage just there is a increase in prices of the imported goods there is no shortage as such right so general price level rise in a country because of rise in prices of imported commodities this is the best definition all, all i mean even though it seems a and c also seems to be correct but this is the most correct definition so answer is b so indila santosh and then sahana trida srinath have answered it as correct right next one which of the following statements is not correct about trees outside forests in india initiative so we have discussed this as well right first one it aims to increase the tree cover outside of forest lands in india in a bid to support global climate change mitigation and adaptation goals so this is the first statement second statement it is a collaborative initiative between usa and india third the program will be implemented in all south indian states right so this is the uh, statements first one uh, let's see yes it increase the tree cover outside of forest by taking all these things so general statement 
it is a collaborative between USA and India. Yes, it is a collaborative between USA and India. It will be implemented in all South states. No, seven states and in South we have AP and Tamil Nadu, right? And other states like Uttar Pradesh and all there. It is not covered for Telangana, Karnataka and Kerala. So, third statement is wrong and uh, rest are correct. So, answer is B. I do not know why only few have answered it as correct, Santosh, Srinath, that is all, only two persons have answered it as correct, right. So, that is, okay, they have asked about the not correct, fine, 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 they have asked about the not correct. So, answer is C, right. So, they have asked about the not correct, not the correct statement. So, those who have correct answer is Sahana, Swarupa, Trida. Uh, and then Oindila, Anj, Anuj. Yes, all of you are correct who have answered it as 3 only. They have asked. So, this type of silly mistakes also should not be done in the exam, right. Next one, in which of the following regions of India one can see the slender loris in its natural habitat? Nallamala hills, northern part of western Ghats, Utkal coast, Ganga plains. I have shown you the map, now you, uh, you have to answer this. I did not directly ask you uh, from the territory, but I have subdivided, you have to answer this. Let us see who will answer. You can eliminate Ganga plains, we have seen it is just part of southern part of India. So, Ganga plains can be eliminated and Utkal coast where it is, it is Odisha, Utkal coast is also called as Odisha coast. So, this can also be eliminated, so it is not there in Odisha coast northern part of western Ghats. No, it is southern parts of western Ghats it is there, right. So, they are located in the eastern Ghats and some parts of southern western Ghats. So, not the northern part of western Ghats. So, answer is Nallamala hills in the eastern Ghats. So, Santosh has answered yes correct and then Sahana has answered Srinath and Anuj. Yes, very good. So, few people have answered as correct. Last question for today. With regard to excavation of Harappan civilization, Pedata Bet site is located in. Pedata Bet site is located in. So, where is it located? Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Punjab. Yes, very direct question. So, no confusion in this. So, answer is C, right? Yes, 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 all of you are correct. So, that is all for today's session. We have a very good number of articles, try to revise them. If you have any doubts, you please comment in the comment section even after the session. I am replying whatever the doubts that you have. So, you can always comment there, right. So, that is all for uh, today's session. Please li like, subscribe our videos. So, that will motivate us to do, you know, on, you know, more in a better way, right. So, have a great evening and happy studies. Thank you.